So welcome to Rolling Out Star Studio. I am your host, Portia Monique, and we're about to get into this new show, Sip and Smoke with Cam Newton. Everybody knows you. You are arguably the most recognizable, um, one of the most recognizable names in the NFL, Heisman Trophy winner, number one overall draft pick out of Auburn University, NFL MVP award, one of the best NFL players for the ESPY awards as well, entrepreneur highly viewed show on BET welcome to the show Cam Newton how you feeling oh man I thought you was gonna keep going you should <laughs> that he he's swaggy he's he, swaggy he, he, I mean, hands on know. dad you know what I'm saying black dad you did you know uh, absolutely business owner business um, owner fashion and, maybe uh you know fashion hey store. Listen. come on with it <laughs> <laughs> Stop. I appreciate that, man. That was that was pretty cool. Yeah, all of that, all of that. So let's get into sip and smoke. So, what was the inspiration of the show? What made you want to do a show such as this? And just tell us all about the show. You know what? You know, I, I just had the opportunity to, um, you know, create something that we naturally do. You know, I have a cigar lounge that's in Atlanta where we shot the show at. It's called Fellowship, and I I realized. I was doing this on a regular basis because outside of everything else that you may have smoked, you know, when people smoke a, cig a cigarette, it's a type of vibe. If you smoke a black amount, it's a type of vibe. If you smoke marijuana or hookah, there's a type of vibe. But I think smoking a cigar kind of gives a person this type of, you know, boss type of attitude and it, it keeps you there for a while. You, you, you know, rarely do you see people smoking cigars on the go. Uh, but it kind of puts you in that mode. And I would always have these dope conversations with people uh, and realize like, man, it'd be crazy if I had the opportunity to, you know, talk to people on a regular basis. And that's what happened, you know? So the beautiful people at, you know, BET gave me an opportunity to do this. And, um, you know, I'm just grateful to have the opportunity. Absolutely. Um, so we saw the show. I saw several of the episodes. Very chill vibe, very laid back, very sophisticated. Um, I'm loving all of it. But how do you go about selecting the guests? So we saw guests ranging from Steve Harvey. You had the brat on and Judy on as well. You also had uh, Mr. Magic on and uh, all of those guests, 2 chains as well. How do you go about, about selecting your guests? Well, it's about their availability as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we shot everything in Atlanta. So, you know, it's, it's just trying to, you know, it's the industry. So mm -hmm. you're available this day. Ah, no, nah, well, we already set to have a production that day. So you're able to do this. Yeah, I'm able to do it. I only can do it, you know, this time. We shot shows as early as 9 a.m. and also shot shows as late as 12 a.m or 11 p.m. So mm -hmm. you know, for us, it was just trying to cross to see if, you know, we're able to do it. Are we able to do it? Okay, cool. Let's, let's, let's knock it out. All right. Love it. Love it. Love it. So out of all of your guests, what have you learned new about some of them? Um, did, have you learned anything new about some of your guests that we may not have known? Oh, absolutely. And I, I think that's the, the main, that's the gist of the show. So mm -hmm. it's not your, your regular, just, okay. Hey, Steve, you know, Hey, two chains. Hey, you know, Mr. Magic, you know, Hey, you know, Tiana, like, let's talk about what everybody already knows. You mm -hmm. know, this is pretty much a comfort thing where, you know, you tell us about what you want to talk about, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and doing it over a, a, a preferred drink and a, um a great cigar you know even makes everything even more kind of laid back and as you said sophisticated yeah yeah um you referred to tiana you're talking about tiana taylor you also had her on the show as well um what who are some of your other celebrity guests that you had fun with like what was your most fun most interesting most fascinating interview that you've conducted well, and why listen i'm not just saying it's just because i'm trying to sell the show <laughs> but I am trying to sell a show. Uh, man, we've had we had David Banner. David Banner is pretty cool. He was he was as out of the box as I would have ever imagined him to be. 
-hmm. and that kind of wow i'm saying smart intelligent okay. he's he's aware you know and <clears throat> every guest you find out certain things and it forces me you know to kind of do my research on oh man i didn't know he did that oh i didn't know he you know is doing this so oh, i didn't know he was big into that mm -hmm. and they expand on it and um for the most part every person tells me something that i didn't know because I want to, I genuinely want to know. And yeah. uh, one of the main things that, you know, as I keep, you know, building off of, of this show, I always kind of said to myself, like, I don't, I don't, I don't need it. You know what I'm saying? This is a passion of mine, you know what I'm saying? And, and I know where they're coming from. So I don't need to probe and make them uncomfortable because I, I just want them to be themselves. The only thing that I wish moving forward is that I have a little bit more time mm -hmm. and, to take this probably to a long format, which allows me to do that. But yeah, you know, the show is what it is and I enjoyed every single moment about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's talk about the show set, Fellowship. So it's your own cigar lounge bar. It's set in Atlanta. Let's talk about the ambiance of it because um, I've never been, I'm in Detroit, so I'm based out of Detroit. But when I come down to Atlanta, I need to make sure that that's on my list of stops. But talk about Fellowship. Yeah, Fellowship is my baby. This is a uh, restaurant where it's a cigar lounge for the grown, for the uh, prominent man and female, um, for the businesswoman, for the businessman to socialize, to network over great drinks, an uh, uh, unbelievable collection of cigars, but more importantly, of great food too. There's not a lot of places in, in, in the world, you know, that you can really enjoy, whether it's from chicken wings to steak to salmon to, you know, great desserts, a full steakhouse menu, you know. Really? Of course, like this is real food. I love it. This is not just finger food. This ain't just, okay. you know, shrimp or, or something like that. We do that <laughs> too. We shrimp and moscato. Nah, nah, this ain't that. <laughs> Some <laughs> these are these are you 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 brushing shoulders with with like minded people. Yeah, uh, yeah. There ain't yeah. no couch standing on a person. Ain't no, uh, you ain't you know, on the top on the back of the couch. No, nah, this ain't that. I spent too much right. money. I spent too much money for this aesthetic, and you are gonna respect it. I promise okay. you that. Okay. Um, the the producer is saying that uh, the food is actually good there, so that's what's up. I'm definitely gonna put that on my list of things to do when I get there. But let's talk about success. So you're successful in just about everything you put your hand in, right? So from football to entrepreneurship, uh, if you've seen some of your shows on uh, Sip and Smoke, definitely successful with this as well. Over a million views, it ain't even been out for a month, you know, um, on several of your episodes. But I want to talk to you about success and how you define success. So what does being a boss mean to you and how do you define success? Doing it your way. Mm -hmm. Like having an, having a, a, an idea, having a dream and you manifesting it to, so when it comes to fruition, a person may say, oh, that's yours. You see what I'm saying? Like that's, you're not being nobody else, but you, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. people who know you, they know the same you. You know, my son knows daddy to be this way. Mm -hmm. You know, my mom knows her son to be this way. Mm -hmm. My my teammates know me as this way. My my friends know me as this, like I'm that same person. So if you're able to, to be true blue about who you are and you don't search for nobody else's validation outside of that person in the mirror and mm -hmm. the man above, then that's what it's all about. That's what being a boss is. A boss is not being a copycat, you know, it's being a trailblazer. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah, I love that as well. And speaking of being a trailblazer, let's get into this fashion sense, okay? So of course you're known for your impactful fashion statements, celebrity trendsetter in your own right. Um, let's talk about it. How do you describe your sense of style? Well, it's, it's just me. You know, I, I, you know, I always would say this. Um, 
I don't I, I don't like going places and somebody got on what I got on. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. like you got the, the newest shoes on just because everybody it just came out. That's not cool to me. You yeah. don't look like but a bunch of mannequins. Mm -hmm. you know? So <laughs> for me, I I feel like I will buy something just to sit on it for years and oh, then okay. wear it when I want to wear it. And mm -hmm. now I'm I'm on this 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 deal where I'm only buying uh, I'm thrift store shopping. Oh. I'm, I'm not I'm not buying high fashion. I don't need I, I realize I've been doing it, you know, going on four months now where I don't I, I don't even see myself kind of going back. Yeah. I get, I get gifts. Mm -hmm. But as far as labels and things like that, no. I, yeah. I don't think you can show your creative side. And there's a difference between style and you know being able to dress right 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 mm -hmm. i mean everybody who got money they can just buy the mannequin and that's not considered style that's boring though right swag is in you it's not on you right swag is in you it's not on you hashtag i love that um speaking of do you have a stylist or is it just all you like this is me no disrespect to all the stylists out there but i think some stylists it's almost like having a ghostwriter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that, that's something that I, I, I really enjoy. This is something that I really kind of, this is, this is, this is my opportunity. You went on mute. Okay, go ahead. Your yeah. opportunity. Yeah, this is the opportunity for me to debrief. This is the opportunity for I, where I can draw inspiration and creativity. Mm -hmm. And I'm all about self-expression without even opening my mouth. So yeah. if I walk into a room and you see that, you know, I have a cherry red outfit on, like you already know what type of you know time I'm on. Mm -hmm. I walk into the room and I got on all black, then you know what type of time I'm on too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I may not speak to you or have the opportunity to speak to you, but you, you will notice, you know, my presence. Okay. Um, Virgil Abloh or Rihanna, if you could do a fashion collaboration and or a partnership with them. Who would you select and why? Um, I do Rihanna. All right, we love Riri. Riri is definitely, um, you know, she's original. She's gonna be herself, and she's unapologetic about who she is. So, definitely love her fashion. I, I do Rihanna just because I draw more inspiration, and I'm as straight as they come. Mm -hmm. but, um, I draw a lot of inspiration from women. Mm -hmm. so women are detail centric, you know, from the smallest of bandanas to, you know, that's why I got a bambushka idea from seeing a woman. And I, I saw it and I was like, man, you know what? I'm, I, I need to rock that. And mm -hmm. I, I remember going to a place to buy a scarf and I was like, hey, sweetheart, can you teach me how to do a bambushka? Uh -huh. And she taught me and then boom, mm -hmm. there it goes. So, a person see me wearing a bambushka, you know, it was it was it was um inspired, inspired. you know, from a female that I saw. It was an old chick too, and she was swag as I don't know what. Okay. You know what I'm it's all about tapping into your your true self, you know. Yeah. And, and um that's what I try to do. I love it, love it, love it. Um I wanna pivot just a little bit. Let's get into Cam Newton, the TV personality. Uh, what have you learned about the process of TV and how do you call your place differently with TV than you do on the field? Well, it's, it's, it's a different aesthetic. It's a different kind of energy that goes about it. I think the more that you study and study up on a person who that you're going to talk to, the better off the, inter the interview is going to be. Mm -hmm. and I've said this before, you know, even though talking to Portia is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, Portia didn't know what kind of cam she was going to get today. You know, no. so you as the interviewer, you have to be able to find that happy media. Mm -hmm. Is he going to be aggressive? Is he going to be flat? Is he going to be, you know, the person that I'm used to seeing? Is he going to be something that, you know, did something personal just happen right before he came? You know, that's what you have to, 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 you know, kind of weave in and weave out. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, there's a big 
respect that that goes to each and every person now me being in this in this seat um but uh i still want to build on it i still yeah. want to still want to create something that 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 people can look back multiple years and say oh man i was that that's still it's evergreen content you know and i can i never knew that then but i know it now mm -hmm. and um let's get into let's stay right there with the tv so we see you doing TV. We know that film is not far behind. So um, if you were to do a film with, say, like a Michael B. Jordan, um, what would you call it? Like, what type of film would you do with a Michael B. Jordan? Um, you know what? I've been on camera for so long mm -hmm. that I think if I don't have to, I would love to direct something. Okay. Things. I, I'm a creative person by, I would think so. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't, I don't really, I'm a social introvert, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm social when I need to, but yeah. I find a lot of solitude by myself and it gives me time to really think and, you know, tap into my inner self and that's mm -hmm. what I do. So if I don't have to be on camera, I don't want to be on camera, contrary to what a person may think. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, if I could do something, I would love to direct or produce it on a hands-on basis. Leading lady, Mr. Director, Mr. Director, who's your leading lady? Who are you selecting? I mean, we got Halle Berry, we got Lupita, we got Sanaa, we got Nia. Like, who's your leading lady? Janet, who you rolling with? Uh, what's my girl? Um, she's... She popping right now. God, I just had a, I just had a. Uh, what film was she in? She was in the film with the, like the, uh, not the, the Armenian dude. Like they was like, it was a funny film. What? Tiffany Haddish? No. Haddish. Oh my goodness. As soon as I, look. <laughs> I gotta get it, I'm sorry. No worries, no worries. You yeah. said she was. Oh, Issa. Issa Rae. That's her. <laughs> yeah, I'm over here trying to play. I'm like, that's Issa. Issa. Yeah, Issa Rae. Absolutely. Issa Rae. It just popped in my head, too. Uh, yeah. She is hot. She popping right now. Yeah, um, all over the place. Big ups to her. Uh, we room for everybody black. You know what it okay. is. Okay. <laughs> so so what are two things that you've learned about yourself as it relates to TV um, that's different? Like, have you discovered new things about yourself during this process? No, you know what? Um, and I'm not saying this on a, you know, a shrewd type of thing. I, I don't, I didn't want to, I didn't find anything about myself. I wanted to show a different side of myself to people. Because mm -hmm. I play a sport where we don't have the luxury of playing basketball where everybody sees your face mm -hmm. you know? or baseball or boxing or something where people be like, oh, man, like that's that. I'm I'm lucky to be a person that people recognize outside of the helmet. But a lot yeah. of people, if without their stature, they'd be like, man, he big. Like what he do? You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And we don't have opportunity to really present ourselves in a way that we want to all the time because we're all this macho man, arr, you know, <laughs> dude that plays this, you know, masculine sport. Yeah. But I just wanted to show a side to people. It's like, man, listen, me even being from Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? Very articulate, very understanding, you know, who I am and what I am, mm -hmm. not shying away from it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, making the best show I could possibly make. I wanted to show people and empower the youth really to be themselves and you're not conforming to what you may think I supposed to be, but how I want you to think I'm supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. I love how you're creating your life and forging your own path uh, without having anyone's opinion interjected in what you do. You're like, this is me and this is what I want to do. So I, I simply love that. Um, music wise, what's on your playlist? What you listening to? Man, Sam Smith. Okay. Um, well, Young Thug just dropped a, a, a album. Uh, Justin Bieber. Uh, oh, but then you got to go gospel too. So you got to go Travis Green. Uh, Travis Green, really, really heavy. Mm-hmm. Uh, William Murphy. Yeah. 
uh, Ty Tribbett. Don't start me to singing. Don't start me to singing. It's me. I, I'm, I'm not one of these little vanilla <laughs> chocolate dudes. Like, I'm asking Robin's 31 flavors. So All right. If you ain't coming with no, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, Chris yes. Mabel, is it Chris Mableton? Uh, um, Chris, if, that sounds right, Chris Mableton. I'm high, I'm big in the gospel too. I'm, I'm, I'm gospel, country, mm -hmm. um, shucks. I'm everywhere with it. Hip hop. How do you yeah. discover new uh, music? Like, John like Mayer, I'm all uh, that. I like, love I'm a it. Vibe, man. I know you vibing with the new song. Well, it's not so new anymore. But um, um, leave the door open. I'm gonna leave the door open. Come on. I'm gonna leave the door open. I'm gonna be. <laughs> I know you love that song. I know you hey, love that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a Bruno Mars. Bruno Mars and 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 uh uh what's his name? Producer. Producer. Anderson Pop. And, thank you. <laughs> Anderson Pop. Let me find out y'all in there uh, sneak sneak. <laughs> yeah, oh that's my song too. That's my song. That's my song. That's my song. Um okay, so if you could pick Pharrell, Drake, Kendrick, Lamar. Who would you do a rap song for, and or any song? Because you thirty one flavors around here. So who would you do a song with, um, a Super Bowl song with? Travis Scott. All right. So nobody on my list. I, I love it, Travis hey, Scott. Uh, hey, I'm sorry, Portia. If if you don't have any more questions about the show, we got to get Cam wrapped up. Okay. Um, um. Okay. So I do. So let me just close it out because I'm gonna do him. I'm gonna I'm gonna do him on what he be doing on his show. So um. Where can we follow your movement? And I'm going to flip your nightcap question on you. Okay. Um, what's now and what's next? Okay, what's now is everybody who sees this, go tune into your know, BET and uh, watch all the episodes of Sip and Smoke. What's next mm -hmm. is I plan on winning the Super Bowl mm -hmm. and uh, going about it in the most swaggiest way ever. I love oh, it. And also being the best father I could possibly be to my children. I love it. I love it. Where can we follow your movement? Follow my movement? Yeah. Uh, if you're not watching Sip and Smoke, you can follow me on social media. That's okay. what you can do. You dig okay. what I'm And if not, man, you know, as I always say, just love. Love is the everything, you know, to life. Well, I love it. Thank you so much for taking the time out to talk with Rolling Out Star Studio. It was a pleasure. Um, you completely swagged out. We love it. We got to see all different sides of you, and we definitely love it. But how do you end your show? One finger, one pinky, one thumb. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, of course. All right. Thank you so much, Cam Newton. It was a pleasure. We'll check for you a little later. Y'all, tune in to Sip and Smoke. Listen, it's that deal, for real. We appreciate you.